Hello, my name's Simon Crafer. We're at Mizano Circuit, and it's time for this week's Tech Talk. We're in the Arai Helmet Service Truck, and I uh, want to speak about safety equipment. And first things first, should speak about the construction of the helmets. And uh, we've got a sample here of the fiberglass, the Kevlar, and it's put with resin into a mold all by hand. And this is the sample that's come out of the mold. And it's, like I said, all, all done by one person. Then the only automated uh, part of the whole construction of the helmet is laser cutting. They cut it off here and the vision area is cut out with a laser. And this is done. Laser's already done its work. Then the person who's made this helmet is signs in here and two other people check the quality of the helmet, thickness and weight to make sure it's perfect and then sign off on that. I should show you the next part is that same shell painted that's got some primer on it ready, ready to paint up. Obviously then um, the shell has uh, top coats um, in whatever design and transfers and beautiful uh, lacquer over the top. But next step is the styrofoam that goes on the inside of here. And as you can imagine, well, I'm told, there's a real, it's a real uh, art to putting these styrofoam. This is cut in half. It's in one piece that inside here. The styrofoam, believe it or not, there's a bit of technology in with that as well because there's different densities. Like around the vision area has to be harder. You know, so it doesn't squash too easy in an impact. But other areas are different densities where they need more absorption over a bigger area. So a bit of technology in that as well. Then, obviously, inside that is the helmet inner. And they're removable, so you can wash them. Same as all the production helmets. That Then the helmet inner, it, you have different thicknesses. Same as the cheek pads that go in here cheek pads because uh, obviously some people are more gaunt some chubby cheeks so you can get different uh, thicknesses to make the helmet fit perfectly and they clip in then here's a sample of a like finished shell cut out so you can see everything in here all the foam there's uh, holes for where the vents go in the vent goes in through the visor and cools the head you can see all the liner is in there all the interior so then we should speak about testing because once the helmets are finished, they go off to be tested. So, um, you know, until last summer, so June 19, uh, sorry, 2019, um, there was three main uh, homologations. You know, when I was racing, there was a Japanese one, JIS, there's a European one, ECE, and Snell, the US one. And they're all good... Um, uh, helmet homologation, but and tests, but um, you can imagine doing world championship. It's uh, good to have one, you know, for that world championship. And so the FIM came out with a new one. With um, the whole goal was to reduce um, brain injury, you know. So make the helmets, make sure they're at a high level. So what they did is, first of all, a helmet man manufacturer must pass one of those three, the Japanese, European, or US um, homologations, when they've done that, then they can apply to pass the FIM one, which is more stringent, meaning they do more, it's a similar test, but m more. And I'll just explain what I've been reading about, what they do, is imagine a anvil, they call it an anvil, it's a, a, a big uh, <laughs> impact area, probably metal, at 45 degrees and they put on something to replicate the asphalt you know when the helmet hits the asphalt so it's like a sandpaper on it and they change that every three impacts you know from damage then they put in the helmet a a uh, human like head weight wise but also it's got silicon coating on it so it replicates what what how we are in here and that is dr dropped like a controlled drop about around 28 kilometers an hour 
into that 45 degree with the sandpaper on it at different points, many different points. And they measure uh, what absorption that helmet has because there is uh, some scientists came up with the HIC value um, in 2009 uh, from the automo uh, automotive industry. And they're a what they've done is made a measurement of the acceleration different parts of the body can handle before damage and how much damage happens at certain acceleration or deceleration. So they measure these helmets and make sure they absorb a certain amount. Um, and I'd like to measure, or oh, then if it passes, they get, or well basically the helmet manufacturer has to give a minimum of 10 helmets per size. Because you can imagine an extra small shell is much smaller than an extra large, you know, and everything in between. So a minimum of 10 each size, so probably f around 50 helmets more. And they do all these tests on each size. If it passes, the helmet gets this homologation, uh, the FIM one. And the, the, they take the rider or the team take this to technical control at MotoGP. Then they get this sticker to say that helmet's passed. And uh, each rider has, you know, three or four helmets. And, uh, but they know which um, helmet the rider is using. The next thing I'd like to explain about is with 60 years experience, Arai are telling me that it's not only the absorption of the helmet that is important because uh, basically a helmet can only absorb so much impact, any helmet, you know. So they said what is super important from years of experience is that the helmet doesn't stop if it doesn't need to, meaning it can glance off. And they need to the helmets to do this well. It is really important the shape of the helmet and how hard the shell is so it glances off things. Also, you can imagine hitting the, either the, the asphalt or the, especially the gravel, the pieces that are sticking off on this helmet need to rip off easily. So they're all done with thin double-sided tape around the edges. So these just come off and don't stop the helmet. So the helmet can keep going, you know, glance off. And they're saying it's super important to reduce brain injury, this glancing off. So next thing I'd like to explain is, now that we've done the safety side, is what the rider wants from a helmet. And Toru-san, who's the, um, uh, the uh, service man for this truck, explained to me it really w well that a helmet should basically not be noticed by the rider so the rider can focus on his job. And I, I think that's great. It's exactly what riders want, meaning it fits well so it's safe and doesn't come off, you know. But there's no pressure points causing any pain. Um, so super comfortable, you don't feel that the helmet is there. Visual doesn't restrict anything, so you don't feel that the helmet is there. Then uh, the ventilation works well, because if it doesn't, you sweat, and then the sweat, when you pop up from that visor at the end of a really fast straight, it feels like somebody's pushing their hand into your face, you know and it squeezes the sweat, runs down into your eyes, which is why they have these, you know, that go inside the, uh, the helmet, you change them, disposable uh, absorption pads in there. But the thing that makes me think that the ventilation has improved a lot over the last 20 years from when I was riding is not many riders need to use this anymore. So the ventilation works enough, they don't need the sweat pads as much. So. All of those things, then I would say visors, super important, obviously. Let's have a look. This is a clear um, clear visor for normal conditions. And very few riders use these because even when it's cloudy, um, riders prefer, on racetrack anyway, there's no tunnels they're going through. So it's a, uh, uh, sorry, a, a light tint, you know, so that just takes the glare off even on a cloudy day, you know. And then we move up to a dark tint, which is probably the most popular most of the time. A little bit of sun out. It's like having sunglasses on. All of these visors are um, basically they, they don't crack, you know. Like 
you could jump on them, fold them in half. They do not fracture. A really high-speed stone will not penetrate for safety-wise. And then the next thing I'd like to talk about is a little bit of technology. They've started putting inside. I don't know if you can see it. It's a dark tint like we just had. But on the inside, there's almost a rose tint. And certain colours help bring out features on the track. So it's more uh, discernible exactly where you are, where the line is things like that. Some riders using that now. Speaking of um, coatings on the inside, all of the visors, it's possible to have an anti-fog coating in there, you know, so especially when it's, it gets colder, your breath fogs it up, anti-fog stops that happening. And uh, if it's really cold and damp, the next one I'd like to show you is the rain visor here. Um, and it's not just used in rain, it's got tear-offs on the outside, but it's double glazed. There's another layer on there, so two coatings, and so, two, yeah, double glazed, and it reduces the fogging a lot. Plus, you can have that anti-fog coating inside there, and it's got a rubber seal around the top that makes sure uh, so basically be the normal helmet seal and this extra rubber seal, making sure no water runs in and down the visor. Because when you're riding, when the visor is so close to you, one bead of water, one drop, it feels like a, a magnifying glass, you know, and it's like really difficult to judge distance. So you don't want any water coming in there. Um, one other thing here is that same double glazed visor can come in light tint, which is... Uh, popular, you can imagine a cold day, it's a little bit sunny, so you need a tint and double glazing and anti-fog. Tear-offs on the outside. Let's um, have a look at, I'll tell you what, you, we were speaking about sweating before, you know, in the visor uh, area, you know, your sweat running down, that's in the hot races. See the drink system here, it connects to usually the hump area of the leathers to get fluid and the rider can take a drink when it's, uh, you know, they're long, hot races. Thank you, Takasan. And then speaking, I would say the last thing I want to tell you about is on whatever visor you've chosen, you can have tear-offs on there. And so this is just a protective coating that the rider takes off before he goes out, you know, so make sure there's no scratches getting carried to the garage. Then um, he has one tear off that he can pull off, say, uh, during some laps of practice or race. He can remove one tear off, rip it off, throw it away, and he has another tear off there, that which pops out, ready to go, ready to grab. And then he can take the second one off if he needs. The thing is, riders are focusing so much, oh, like concentrating so much on riding, very seldomly do they take it off during the race because they're too busy focusing, you know. It's not till warm down lap they realise it's really dirty. I would say the only time they would take one off is as if a big bug or something had got and is blocking the view of one eye. Then you've got to risk losing a little bit of time to, to clear that vision. Anyway, thank you, Suzuki-san. And I would like to say I hope you've enjoyed this little insight into helmet and uh, testing and technology and uh, we'll see you next week at Mazana again for the next TikTok.